welcome back to another video today is a bodybuilding video we're doing chest and back so the last one was delts and what was the last one delts and arms yeah <laughs> it's been a while we don't know what we're doing chest and back it's the same thing i always do give you tips and yeah, explain every single exercise why i like to do them uh, certain things that you should do that you probably don't and you can apply to your session short and sweet intro before we get into the video I have some awesome news. Gem shot, gem shot. See that? See that? <laughs> have this sell on the 26th of May. I'll put a link, uh, and it's up to 60% off on a lot of the kits. So why not get to shopping? If you use my link, appreciate you so much. This is how I earn a living. This is how I get paid. I do earn a commission, so I'm always upfront about this. I earn a commission. It's what helps me bring you so much awesome content. Hopefully you get some awesome outfits so you can look almost as cool as me. Almost. <laughs> All right, let's get straight to the video. The first exercise is a narrow grip pull-up. This is a slightly easier way to perform pull-ups. However, the biceps do get involved slightly with this variation. Make sure to brace your core and engage your glutes when performing the exercise. Try and control the eccentric tempo and also squeeze your lats as hard as you can at the top of the movement. Also, I am using straps to help me get some extra reps when my grip and forearms start to fatigue. Remember the back is a big muscle and usually it's your grip and forearms that starts to fatigue before your back. Also the final set is a drop set so perform the exercise as normal and then once you hit failure perform some very slow negatives to finish. and then superset the pull-ups with some cable flies. With the cable flies, I like to lean forward slightly and also make sure to have my chest up and shoulders back. Control the eccentric tempo and make sure at the top of the movement to squeeze your chest as hard as you can and keep that tension even during the eccentric. And also the final set is a drop set, so 10 reps. And then once you hit 10 reps or you hit failure, drop the weight down and perform another 10 reps. And that is what a drop set means. I'd also like to mention that I have done a video solely on chest, back, every single body part on my channel. So if you're just looking for a workout, predominantly for one body part, check out my other playlist on my channel. Okay, for the bench press, I've explained this already in my video for chest workout, so make sure you check that out. But quick tips I'm going to give you now is shoulder blades down, back on that bench, not up here, back on the bench. And when you drive up, you don't have to bring your dumbbell up here to touch because your shoulder blades are going to come off that bench. So keep your shoulder blades down. And then when you go all the way down, you can go elbows past your shoulders slightly, 
you don't want it to be here because then it's too much on your shoulders and your chest is relaxed. So slightly lower than your chest, drive up, nice and slowly down, control that eccentric, lower than your delts, push up, nice and slow down, drive up. Make sure you keep that tension on your chest. And like I always say, when you're at the top, squeeze the muscle like it owes you money. dumbbell rows. This time I'm using a split stance because it actually gives you better stability. However, if you wanted to do both legs, so hip width apart, that's fine. It actually requires more core activation. So that's a bonus if you want to do that. However, this time I am doing a split stance. One arm resting on the bench. Now, you notice in the video, I retract my shoulder blades and then row up. Okay. So, if you don't want to do that, shoulder blades back, row up nice and slowly down, and then stop here. Not here, okay, keep that shoulder blade engaged, row up. However, I just like to add the scapular row before rowing up. I find this helps to strengthen your scapula as well as it helps you with good form when performing the row. So two things, remember that you can retract your shoulder blades before you row up or just row up, but making sure that this is engaged, so shoulders back. And of course, when you row up, remember this is your lats. This is an exercise for your lats. You're not just doing the rows because a lot of people I see are just doing the reps. Okay, when you row up, you notice I was taking my time all the way down, row up, squeeze your lats, engage your lats, and slowly down. I am using a wrist strap because it helps me get a few more reps when my forearms are tired. I also sometimes like to use a false grip with the strap because it just means your lats have to do a lot more work rather than just pulling it with your forearms. Pendley rows, I like to have my feet fit. Ugh, I always get tongue tied saying this, hip width apart. So widening your hips, basically. <laughs> Hands wider than your legs, okay? And you grip the bar. I like to actually use a hook grip. Hook grip is thumb, thumb over underneath and then fingers over. Bring your butt down, chest up, engage your lats. Squeeze, drive up, slow you down. Bring it up towards your chest. Engage, drive up, slow you down. This is going to be very important when it gets heavier. So make sure you're engaging your shoulder blades. Otherwise, this is what you're going to be doing. Your lower back's going to be rounded and it's not your back anymore. You are just using more shoulders. Make sure that lat is engaged. Shoulder blades engaged. Shoulders back, row up. Also, don't forget to keep this engaged. Core braced, so brace your core that would stop you from hunching over and that will stop it being a lower back exercise because a lot of people complain about that. Embrace your core, squeeze your glutes. Narrow presses. This is a weird one, but I love doing this for chest. Okay, so elbows in very close to your body. And then what you want to do is bring the dumbbells down towards your chest and drive up. Bring it all the way down to your chest. Make sure you keep your shoulder blades down, back on that bench. When you drive up, squeeze your chest as hard as you can. Remember that what I always say, squeeze it like it owes you money. Squeeze as hard as you can. One trick you can do when pressing, squeeze those dumbbells together, squeeze them as hard as you can. 
What happens is when you squeeze, your chest gets engaged. It's, it's a nice trick to do whenever you're doing any pressing, especially narrow presses. Squeeze the dumbbells, not your chest, the dumbbells, because that would engage your chest and that would allow you to fully make sure that you're working the chest when you're pressing. And again, remember the tempo. Slow down the tempo when performing this exercise. But when you get to the top of the movement, squeeze it, okay? Like what? I'm gonna let you say it, finish. I'm gonna let you finish that sentence. And next we have a lat pull down. Notice how I have my grip just wider than my shoulders. If you go too wide, then it's a lot more on your shoulders and minimal lat engagement. Make sure you brace your core and keep your chest up. And notice how I shrug my shoulder blades down before performing the movement. So engage your shoulder blades and lat before you pull the bar down. At the bottom of the movement, keep that tension on your lats and control the eccentric all the way up. Once again, I am using wrist straps to help me get extra reps once I start to fatigue. Also, I like to use a false grip. This means less forearms and I am pulling that weight down more using my lats. And then superset with banded push-ups. Pay attention to how I wrap the band to perform this exercise. Using a band is far more effective when performing push-ups as the bands add resistance during the concentric phase of the exercise, which almost mimics a bench press. The extra resistance means a lot more muscle engagement needed to perform the exercise. To progress this, you can use a harder resistant band, which will make this even more challenging. And finally, we have a Metcon finisher, which is something I normally do with my training. So I thought I'll add this to the video. This is a 10 minute AMRAP and it's also a ladder workout. So starting with double unders, 40 double unders and single arm alternating devil press. Each round you want to increase the reps by two on the devil press. So the first round will be 40 double unders and six alternating devil press. Second round will be 40 double unders eight alternating devil press. Third round will be 40 double unders and 10 alternating devil press. Keep going till 10 minute time is up. And that's pretty much it, nice and simple. Yeah, that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Oh, what is this doing? What is this PhD bottle doing it in my hand? Discount code OBV10, joking. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. I put the mech on in there because that is something I do and I know some of you want to train the way I do. So there you go. You can do the mech on if you want to. That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, yeah, enjoy the weather wherever you are. It's a beautiful day, so I'm going to go out and get a tan. Peace out. <laughs>